Do I like hop on you and then you start squatting? Is that how this goes? People may see it as a secondary, but to me, equal, if not even more important. The oh, I'm an alien. I do wish that we could get more time. Oh my goodness. Well, we are here with the TVS champion, Chris Statlander. Here I am. So sparkly. Ooh. It matches your hair color too. I know. It's almost too perfect. Yeah, it's just because my hair color is faded and <laughs> I'm too lazy to keep up with it. So how do we start this interview? Do I like hop on you and then you start squatting? Is that how this goes? Chris Statlander, our TBS champion. How do you feel about an opponent of that caliber? Oh man, I've got so much wrestling to do. I think I'm just <laughs> going to stay seated today. <laughs> You're having three matches this whole week in Chicago. Yes. Yeah, I do love wrestling in Chicago, so it's fitting. Let's talk about All In. I mean, what a freaking success. More than yeah. 80,000 people. It's crazy. What a, uh, a monumental event for not just AEW, but for wrestling in general, for the history of wrestling it's incredible yeah i mean you were from basically the start so yes. how did how was it like to see that company grow to that amount it's it's so amazing but at the same time it's we all knew that that potential was there just based off of the talent that we have the people that we have the amazing guidance that we have um trying to build aew as a team it was just so nice to like we know we have all this potential to be a top player in wrestling and to see that actually happen is you know, it's, it's just uh, wrestling isn't always rewarding, but that was a that was a time that we were rewarded for our hard work. So just after a week, you're here in Chicago for All Out. Correct. And you got a match with Ruby Soho. I do. Yes. I'm very excited for that because uh, Ruby is someone I've wrestled her twice before, but I've never gotten a chance to beat her. Uh, she's always gotten the better of me. At this point in our careers, we are both very different people from those first two times. I've overcome so much due to my leg injuries. Now I'm a champion. She's had a little bit of a personality change as well <laughs> yes. and she labeled me by name as the reason why she decided to go to the dark side if you will it's not just about the title this match there's so much more depth to it it's not just about retaining my title it's about finally getting that win over ruby proving to her that like she can't always get the better of me every single time and that there's so much growth from the that first time that we wrestled but let's talk about that time that you guys wrestled because yes. everybody remembers what happened yes <laughs> Everyone loves Ruby Soho, but until she faced you, yeah. people started booing her. Yeah. For we know Ruby Soho will face Dr. Britt Baker. Yeah, I get it. I get it, y'all. You're upset. Yeah, that was actually the second time. The second the time. The first okay. time was in Atlanta, and that was for the original tournament for this TBS title. Got it. Uh, and then she made that all the way to the finals. Mm -hmm. And then we wrestled in the main event of Rampage in Las Vegas. Uh, and that was for the first ever Owen Hart tournament, which she made it all the way to the finals. Yeah, everyone loves Ruby Soho. I loved I loved her and now, you know, times have changed and I am the reason why people don't love her anymore, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so how did it feel when you heard the people just cheering so hard for you all the way to booing Ruby? Felt like there was a, a monumental change in my career. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, unfortunately, not long after that is when I tore my ACL the second time. So it was it was like a big rise and then a big dip because it, everything I was getting to the top and then everything was taken away from me once again. I remember thinking to myself because she got on the mic and she addressed Britt mm -hmm. after that match. Yeah. And she said, you saw what I do to my friends. Wait till I, you see what I do to you. And I remember I was laying on the floor defeated and I go... That's what you do to your friends? <laughs> and I said that out loud. I was like, oh my God. Well, that's what you get. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> and you know what? You got a receipt coming. <laughs> back in the ring. Three. I mean, obviously fans are obsessed with you. They're so behind you during all in. Mm -hmm. You posted a photo of you at home. Yes. And fans were not really happy about that. And that's fine because yeah. uh, there was so much that needed to be on that show. You know, there's not always a spot for everybody and that's okay. I only posted that photo to show people because I saw there was so much speculation online about is Ruby and Chris happening mm -hmm. at All In? Uh, maybe she'll get a buy-in match. And I, I only posted that to be like, guys, I'm not there. I wasn't trying to be like, oh, I'm so mad that I'm not on. It, it was very upsetting that I didn't get a chance to be there, but I only posted that to just say, my time is gonna be next week. And that's 
all it is. And I was very like, let's enjoy all in for what it is. Let's support everyone that is there that had to make that travel and, you know, pull off such an amazing event. Uh, right. Because now, Chicago is my time. Yep. So at All In, we saw Soraya become the new AEW Women's Champion. Yes. We got two women's champions in AEW. In your mind, what is TBS Championship different from the AEW Women's Championship? Um, well, the thing about the AEW Women's Championship, the World Championship, is that it was, again, it was a title from the beginning. The number one prize. Uh, and the TBS title, it was brought in a little bit late later. Doesn't always get the attention it deserves, I believe, but... Um, I mean, I'm only the second champion, so it hasn't had the longevity and the history that the world title has. People may see it as a secondary, but to me, it's my first AEW title. I'm the first person to beat Jade Cargill for yeah. it, and I am the second ever. And it is my job as that champion um, of, of TBS to make it feel just as important as any other title yeah. because you know a champion is a champion holding the title doesn't make you the champion it's your actions as the title holder that Got makes it. you the champion i feel so i'm just going to be doing everything that i can to make it as equal if not even more important than the rest of them yeah and you're such a fighting champion and you're defending it all the time which makes this so <laughs> much more valuable i feel like we need to talk about your finishers because they are freaking wild yes <laughs> yeah i have the it was formerly known as the big bang theory mm -hmm. And now it is, it's night fever, but depending on what day of the week it is, because okay. the original Bee Gees album is Saturday night fever, mm -hmm. but if we're wrestling on Wednesday, it's Wednesday night fever. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of, I just thought that was a fun thing to do. Uh, I know a lot of people are concerned about my knees mm -hmm. with that one, but my doctors would not let me do it if they didn't think I could do it. Okay. I remember when we were practicing getting me cleared, they were like, all right, do it. And I was like, all right, if you say so, then I, <laughs> I guess it's fine. And the 450 yeah. or area 451, that one, uh, you know, I'm just good at doing flips, I guess. <laughs> So let's talk about your injury for a little bit, because, I mean, you were out for a while. Yeah, the, so it was two separate injuries. The first one was the left leg, mm -hmm. and that was the ACL and the meniscus. Mm -hmm. And then I came back, and then I was back for well over a year, because people think that I got hurt like minutes after I returned. That's not what happened. I was I was back for a while, mm -hmm. and then I tore the, the other one. Got it. So it just felt like a very long time. Oh. But uh, I think collectively it was almost two years worth of time off because of the injuries because it just takes a very long time for like the biology of your actual leg to recover and mm -hmm. like the surgery to everything to kind of latch in and form and take place and get strong again it just it, t it just takes a long time did it, you have to change anything in ring because of the injury i mean i i can't wrap my head my legs around someone's head because i'll cut their head off no. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't do that much but right. now i I, I just make sure I try to at least not decapitate my okay. opponents. <laughs> okay, so. let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, keep it a little less gory. <laughs> let's get back to you defeating Jade Cargill. I mean, she had such a long undefeated streak. Yes. I mean, people like Ruby Soho, Athena, Madison Rain, all the world champions in wrestling was not able to beat her, but you're the one that finally defeated her. Yeah, I, I, I did it. I'm the one. <laughs> How did that feel? It, it felt surreal because it felt like it took me such a long time because of my injuries. I, it was such an uphill battle consistently for so long just to get me to a point where I finally got that title match. And I know some people feel a certain way about it because it was her second match of the night, right, but they right. put out the challenge and it's not my fault that I answered it. If and whenever Jade decides to make her return, just one-on-one -on -one match, just me and her, and not redeeming myself, but proving that the win was not a fluke. You know, one thing about Jade Cargill though, was that every big match, she brought in some looks. Yes, yeah, and no one will be able to top her with that. I, I commend her so much. She always brought such a star power to everything that she did, not just her big pay-per-view matches or her big title defenses, but even just her backstage promos and stuff, you can't not acknowledge that she is a star. She I, is. I feel like you're gonna ask me if I have anything big planned. I yeah. there was a lot of a lot of stuff going on given that all in just happened. Uh, so there wasn't a lot of preparation, but I've got a little something special. Oh. It's not gonna be Jade's level, but I did try to put a little bit of a spin. Okay. okay. Or I'm going to try to put a little bit of, of a spin onto just my normal 
my normal stuff. Got it. I'm going to try and step it up a tiny bit. <laughs> I might be one of the few people, but I really miss your alien character. The boop. I, mean, I know. Love boop. I know. I feel like it's a very 50-50 split with how people feel about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like it went so well with your like out of the world athleticism inside the ring. Yeah, I get that. Um I, I felt like doing the alien thing, it get, it gave people a better look into me as a person. And it's not to be like, oh, I'm an alien, but I'm just, I know I'm a little bit of an awkward person. I'm a little bit different. And sometimes the, the things that I do are unique. And I felt like that was kind of a, just like an easy way to just show what I am as an easy, like, oh, yeah, alien different makes sense i don't know I, know I know some people a lot of people didn't take that seriously and they never thought that it would mm. be like world champion material and it might have been but uh i just felt like it was time for me to try and grow not just as a person as a performer and just try something different and I, I mean it did bring me to this i don't want to say it was a mistake <laughs> but it was maybe it was time for Something new. So after Collision started, you are having your 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 own fun in there. The likes of Mercedes Martinez, Willow. How is it like to have your little like a little bit of a own thing going on in Collision so far? I'm having fun. I, I've actually been showing up for both Dynamite uh, Dynamite days and I'm there for Collision days. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm very much not home a oh. lot of the week. But um, I just, as a champion, I feel like it is my duty to be ready whenever they need me. Mm -hmm. And Dynamite is a little packed sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to be able to find a little bit of a home on Collision and for them to want me to be there and accept me. And then also Dynamite is always a home. I mean, Dynamite is the only one of our three television shows that is on TBS. So I always love to make an appearance on my network. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fan of both. Let's talk about the women's division. Of course. Some women's wrestling fans are bit unsatisfied with how women are booked on AEW. Mm -hmm. They're saying that you guys deserve more time, more storyline consistency. As a champion, what's your thought on that? I think there's always going to be a desire for more. I think everyone is always left wanting more and wondering what could happen if we were given more? I, I hate to think that the women are just like a, a niche or a a special attraction type thing because my whole career before AEW was even a thing, all I ever said was that I wanted to be a great wrestler, mm. not a great women's wrestler. I wanted to be a great wrestler. Yeah, I do wish that we could get more time because I do feel like if we're given time with the right people, we're going to put on a show that no one's ever going to forget. You know, that's just life though. We always... <laughs> We're just uh, always gonna keep fighting an uphill battle no matter what we do, not just in wrestling, but in all of life because that's just what happens when you're a woman sometimes. I like to think that there are people that do have our backs and I know that there are people that have our backs and the more people show that they wanna see us, the more that we're gonna get to do. The fans so, need to speak up. Yeah, that that's the best that you can do is just speak up and Prove that you want to see us because we we want to be there for you and we want to do anything that we can to put on a show for you guys. AW has so many talented women in the roster. Yeah. Who are women that we haven't seen on TV that much lately that you want to face in the ring, maybe for a championship too? Mm. So she recently started appearing on Collision. I would love to have a give Diamante a oh. title match. I've worked with her a few times a while ago, but she's just, you know, she's had some beef with me recently. So I'll, I'll if she wants to step up for a title match, I'm ready. That's slice bread. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to take it, but if she gives it to me, I guess I'm, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> we'll see. So last question. Yeah. This is a question that shows up a lot in RuPaul's Drag Race. I know that you haven't watched yeah, it, so yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> what do you want to tell this person in the screen? Oh my goodness. <sighs> I want to tell her to <laughs> ask why didn't the makeup people <laughs> give me eyebrows? <laughs> they just didn't want me to have eyebrows that day. That's what I want to know. But I'll tell you, she was she was ready to go. That was a big question. Where, where, are, where are my eyebrows? Why didn't you give me eyebrows? <laughs> you tied tassels into my hair, but you didn't give me eyebrows. 
And from there, now you're the champion representing AEW. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. What do you want to tell the fans? The fans were waiting for you for two years to recover, including me. <laughs> and you're finally here championing, defending your title against everyone. What do you want to tell yes. the fans? Uh, to everyone that supported me in my time off and really vouched for me and wanted to see me win a title, thank you so much. And I'm going to do everything that I can to continue to be the best champion that I can be.